Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation x cubed plus 3xy plus y cubed equals 1. We're going to be finding the real solutions of this equation. Now, this problem has been adopted from Putnam exam. This is 2006 question B1. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So we're going to be putting everything on the same side. So let's go ahead and do that. I will subtract 1 from this and set it equal to 0. Now I'm going to manipulate this a little bit uh, to put it in a form that I want it to be because I will use an identity. So let me show you what that looks like. Let's write this x cube and y cube together. And then I'll just write this as plus negative 1. And then instead of 3xy, I'm going to write minus 3xy multiplied by negative 1. Obviously, they are equivalent, and the whole thing is equal to 0. Now, I'm going to turn this into an identity that, that I already know. And normally, when we have a variable, we want to find the numerical value and substitute that value for the variable so, we, so that we can find the other variables. But we're going to do just the opposite right now, which is kind of unusual, and I really like this type of method. So we're going to be replacing negative 1 with a variable. And that is going to be z. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to replace negative 1 with z. But I do need a cube here. So since z is negative 1, now I can replace negative 1 here with z cubed. Because if z is negative 1, then z cubed is also negative 1. Now let's go ahead and do the substitution. And let's see what happens. We get x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed minus 3xyz equals 0. Now, this is a well-known identity. We've done this in other videos. I could also link them down below so you can take a look at it. But this expression is factorable. And we can factor it. One of the factors is going to be x plus y plus z. So you can write this expression as x plus y plus z multiplied by x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus xy minus xz minus yz. Now I'm not going to get into how we can factor this because that's probably going to be another video. Uh, and I believe we, we've done that before or even if we haven't, we just use this identity and we can definitely do that later on. So now when I set this equal to zero, one thing to remember is that z is a temporary variable. I don't really want to stick with z because I just needed it to you know, complete my identity and or my expression to make it factorable or easier to factor. So now I want to just replace z with negative 1 so that I can stay with two variables. But remember, z is negative, so it's going to be a negative 1 here. And z squared is going to be positive 1. And z is negative 1, so this is going to be a plus x. And that's going to be a plus y equals 0. Great. Now, this expression has two factors. It's already factored. And x plus y minus 1, we can set it equal to 0. And so we, if you go ahead and take this expression, let's, let's start with the first one. Let's set it equal to 0. Now, you got to remember, our goal is to find real solutions. And we're going to find all the real solutions to this problem. And don't be upset because we're not finding complex solutions. Feel free to comment any type of complex solution that we can find. And we'll interact that way. But within the time constraints, and I want to stick to the real variables here. I hope you don't mind. So the first variable, the first solutions come from this equation, x plus y equals 1. Okay, did I say that? Okay, I did, I did say that. x plus y equals 1. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, we don't have any other condition on x and y, so that means that any two, any two numbers that add up to 1 will be a solution. So we could express it this way. You can just write, um, replace the y with another variable, or you can do the same thing with x, I guess. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's replace x with t. It's usually done that way to parameterize the solutions. That's what we call it. And here, if x is replaced with t, then y just becomes 1 minus t. So in other words, you can write your solution set as the set of ordered pairs, t comma 1 minus t, such that t is a real number. So if t is any real number, this will become a solution. So for example, if t is equal to 0, 
then you're going to get 0, 0,1 as a solution. And if you plug it in, you're going to notice that it's going to be a solution of the original problem. And let me go ahead and write our original equation here. So you can quickly check that 0, 0,1, 0, 1 works. And then what happens if t is equal to 1 half? Then you're going to get something like 1 half, 1 half. This is kind of interesting because the, in this case, x and y are equal. And you could definitely find that solution by replacing y with x in the original problem. But that would just be a specific particular solution. And obviously, when you do this, you're going to get 1 eighth plus 3 times 1 half times 1 half plus 1 eighth. And that's going to be 1 half plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth is going to be 1 fourth. And this is going to be 3 fourths. And their sum is going to be 1. Obviously, no, no matter which values you use, as long as they're real numbers, this is going to be satisfied. What happens in the complex world, that's for you to find out. Now, this is just part of the solution. These are not all the solutions. So we're going to be looking at another thing as well. And this is the coolest part because I, I'm pretty sure some other YouTubers made a video on this, but I'm not sure if they've used this method. And this method is actually really, really cool. I hope you'll appreciate that too. So for that purpose, I'm just going to copy that equation here. I have x squared plus y squared plus 1. And then I have minus xy. And I'm going to show you here two alternatives, even though I'm not going to fully solve both methods. Uh, I will at least show you uh, the other method as well. So maybe we'll start with that one. How about that? You can definitely arrange this equation in terms of y, like as a quadratic in y, and then solve it as a quadratic in y, treating x as a constant. And obviously, we can use the quadratic formula that allows you to write y in terms of x, and then using the discriminant, using the fact that x and y are both real numbers, you can find the solutions from here. So here's what, what it's going to look like briefly. You can just write it as y squared, and then I have y and minus xy, so I can just write it as the quantity 1 minus x multiplied by y, and then everything else obviously is going to be a constant. So I use these terms. Now I end up with x squared plus x plus 1 is equal to 0. And from here, if you just set up the quadratic equation, the formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and it's going to look like this and all over 2. And from here, you just have to deal with what's under the radical, so on and so forth. Since I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I want to focus on the other method, and that method is actually really, really cool. Now, here's what I'm going to do to this expression. And you might be asking, like, why do we do these things? Because these are algebraic manipulations. Sometimes to make expressions easier to solve or factorable or whatever, we do these kinds of things. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 times 2 on both sides. That's going to give me 2x squared plus 2y squared. And I want to put the variables together, sort of, and leave the constant for the end. And then plus 2x plus 2y plus 2 is equal to 0. Again, at this point, this may not be very meaningful to you, but I'm going to manipulate it, split it up, break it down, and make it nicer. So hopefully by this time you notice that negative 2xy indicates that we're going to, you know, write a perfect square x squared uh, indicates a perfect square. So we're going to write this as basically a sum of perfect squares. Perfect. Let's do it. So I can plot an x squared from here and then minus 2xy. And then I can just add a y squared to it. And this becomes a perfect square. Nice. And then the other x squared, the leftover, I can take that and add it to 2x and then just borrow 1 from the 2. And that becomes another perfect square. And now I have y squared left. 2y left and 1 left because I used everything else. And you can just add these up to make sure that we're getting the exact same expression. I'm not going to do it. It's easy. You can do it. Maybe you've already done that. Now, what is that supposed to mean? This gives me x minus y quantity squared and then x plus 1 quantity squared plus y plus 1 quantity squared. Now, if you have the sum of perfect squares being equal to 0, then each term needs to be 0 because you can't get a 0 by adding non-negative terms unless they are all 0. So this implies, this is huge, that's why I really love this method because one equation gives you three equations at the same time. This indicates that x minus y is equal to 0, x plus 1 is equal to 0, y plus 1 is equal to 0, 
all at the same time. And the first one gives you y equals x, the second one gives you x equals negative 1, and the third one gives you y equals negative 1. The second and the third equation already verify the first one, so we're good. We don't really need that anymore because we have specific values, and this is going to give you the ordered pair negative 1, comma, negative 1. And remember the other solutions were like t, comma, 1 minus t, where t is a real number. So we kind of got like two types of solutions, a particular one like negative 1, comma, negative 1, and a more generic one where you can just pretty much use all values of t. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another great video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.